is more connected usually than the father. So she generally would say, you know, first of all, the father would say, well, he'll get over it. it it'll pass. It'll go away. But the mother always understands the deep meaning or, deep, or, or the deep feelings that you're having. And she sensed that. Did she say t t to you, like, you know, did she ever mention to your father, well, maybe the boy's crazy, or maybe he needs to see somebody? How did it, how did that conversation come about? Did they ask you what was going on with you? Oh, they could just tell, and I also was honest with them. I told them, you know, I'm having a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they didn't think I was crazy. They, uh, what spooked both me and my mom at that time was uh, I went to my GP to ask for some help. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, you might, uh, you might develop schizophrenia. And back then it was like, whoa, like huge, huge hit. My mom was really hit by that because it's a scary diagnosis. It means, you know, lost touch with reality, blah, 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 all the assumptions about it. But um, back then, yeah, when, when he said that, that scared both me and my mom. But uh, yeah. Okay, so I don't want to dig too much into it. <clears throat> I just want to sort of lay it out for the audience that um, I, w I want to figure out why he's going through what he's going through. What first started it? There had to be a starting point. Now, now when your parents took you to the psychiatrist or to the doctor, what did the doctor first say? Because you were a young person, I would just think they'd be like, well, he's just stressed out, or he's got too much energy. No, once, once I saw a psychiatrist, it was already bad. It was after homelessness and, and psychosis. That was after the panic attacks, and it was mm -hmm. after a very severe nervous breakdown when mm -hmm. I was 19 in July. And after that, uh, psychosis started two years after this severe nervous breakdown. Just to put it in perspective, like this nervous breakdown was so severe that it was worse than the psychosis that was to come. Two, okay. two years later, it was a complete debilitating me. I couldn't get out of bed, I would faint. Because, you know, my, my nervous system was in such bad shape. If I lifted my head off the pillow, just be like, uh, and mm -hmm. agitation was through the roof. If, mm -hmm. if I had to handle uh, 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 10 seconds of that, it would be harder than my life now, you know, a month's time. Mm -hmm. So, well, I would. Now, once they figured out what was happening with you, what was the, was there a difference in the way your parents treated you when once the doctor told them that you were going through something? Did, did they treat you any different? My parents were always loving. They always accepted me. Okay. I never had problems with them treating me differently. Um, well, you know, that's a good thing. They told my parents he'll never be the same when I was in the hospital after the homelessness and finally getting on medication and stuff. Mm -hmm. But they said that, but uh, you know, m my mom was a bit obviously very worried for me, but over the past, <clears throat> um, over the past, how many years has it been? Over the past 10 years that I've been out of hospital and mm -hmm. recovering slowly and getting better and even surpassing pre-illness. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, I want to just ask you this. What did the, di the doctors diagnose you as having? What was the actual diagnosis? It was schizophrenia. Okay. Um, and is there a cure for schizophrenia? Is there a cure or is there, a, do you have to stay on medication for your whole life? Or like, how does it work? The general accepted treatment is medication for a while, at least five years, but mm -hmm. usually your whole life, yeah. Um, they also recommend being active, um, working, whatever, being just like any, any, any person would keep up their own mental health mm -hmm. or uh, feel good is what's recommended for a person with schizophrenia. Okay, now you talked a lot about this homeless thing that seemed to have had a real effect on your mental wellness or just your, it sort of made your situation worse. So how did you become homeless? Um, I was struggling at the time. This was after the nervous breakdown in 2011. Mm -hmm. You know, um, weed isn't recommended for people with schizophrenia, but I, that's, that's, that's kind <laughs> weed of Weed is not recommended for people with schizophrenia. It's a slippery, you heard it from slope. It's a slippery <laughs> slope. I think it can have some benefit if taken properly or maybe taken with little THC or even taken, you know, full-blown weed. I think you can make use of it. 
But for me at the time, it wasn't that good. I was going through a lot of, it made it heightened my, my struggle. Okay. So at that point, uh, I got really upset with my dad for something that was past, um, past trauma with him because he was controlling when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I got so angry that I said, screw it, I'm, I'm leaving home, I'm gonna become homeless and uh, live in shelters. And so I, yeah, it was because of- So uh, you, you chose to leave home? Yeah. So how did you, so dealing, were you taking medications at the time? No. Okay. So what happened when you became homeless? Like, like how did, like you even, must have been going through something before, traumatizing. Before, yeah. It was, even before I became homeless, I started already having some psychotic symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, once I became homeless, they obviously got worse. Mm. Because, you know, no diet, no good diet, no good support, you know, the usual things with homelessness, mm -hmm. you've been homeless too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so you kind of remember some of those things. I understand. It's a, it's a really mm -hmm. shitty kind of uh, environment for a person struggling with mental illness mm -hmm. to be homeless because that just makes everything worse. You don't have a place, a safe place to process emotions, you don't mm -hmm. have a, a structured routine, you're vulnerable. So, while, while I was homeless though, it was a trip. It was like, like a psychotic, very interesting trip. There are some really interesting parts and fun parts, a lot of very difficult um, mm -hmm. psychotic experiences. You know, just to go into this brief detail, it was uh, some, I started with telepathy with people. I would communicate with people in my head, mm -hmm. it, which I met in person, but communicated with them after I met them. And some of those interactions were really, really vivid, more vivid than this, you know? It's mm -hmm. like you feel them and they're answering you it's just amazing, you know, and, and, um, so when you were in the shelter, did you, when you were, because when you were at home, you say you had a few episodes, did you ever have any real episodes at the shelter, or you were too busy trying to figure out this anomaly of concerning everything, like, from being in a safe space to mm -hmm. not knowing if the person next to you is going to kill you, rob you, or whatever. So. I was too lost in my own trip to really worry about things, but obviously still affected me. And the whole the whole homelessness six months of it, I was in an episode. Mm -hmm. You could say a pretty bad one. Yeah. So, so how do you feel about you? you you've been taking medication now for how long? Uh, nine years. Okay. And how does this medication make you feel? Does it? Does it? Is it helping? My personal view about medication is over medication is bad. No medication can also be bad. The right dose can help you to be um, to bring you down a little bit, where you can still have some symptoms and your regular feelings, your regular mm -hmm. emotions, and you could actually work with work just like anyone else works with their with their mind mm -hmm. uh, to 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 slowly recover and get better. Um, but uh, for a while, I was over-medicated, really over-medicated, and that's actually really bad. It feels really bad to be over-medicated. Well, you know, for me, I find that, you know, the challenges, I, I, I mean, there's so many challenges being a young person, mainly when you become homeless and you've chosen that. I'm sure your mother reached out once or twice and said, come home or what's happening with you and all of this stuff. Yeah. And, um, but when you, when you think about the mere fact that you're a young person and you should be doing things that young people should be doing instead of going to doctors and, and, and being homeless and stuff, you should maybe have a girlfriend or playing sports or hanging out with your friends. This is stuff that you, that you probably you missed in the six months that you were homeless. Did it? Did the homelessness wake you up into reality? I don't feel like I missed anything because when you're 20, which is when I was homeless, you have a lot of pressure on kids, 20 year old kids to uh, find a job, keep a job, go to school. And that's nice. I don't feel like I was missing. I had a very good teenage uh, life, mm -hmm. a very good few years. And I uh, didn't feel like I was, I was missing anything, to be honest. I, it did the, um, <clears throat> One thing I will share was when I had that breakdown, the, the nervous breakdown, before it, I was, you know, like a teenager, you know, you can mm -hmm. see it on my face. Afterwards, I took a picture of myself while I was really struggling, and part of me is like, well, I feel like an adult now. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, 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 I'm still not, you know, fully an adult, but it uh, changed me, you know, it really helped you, helped me grow a lot, I think, which is a, not a very popular opinion about mental illness, is it helps you grow. Mm-hmm. People think it's just a nuisance and something needs to be fixed and medicated and repressed and, and basically ignored or treat, treated, yeah, but people don't talk about the fact that it is, in my opinion, um, spiritual growth, mm-hmm. emotional maturity, personal development, that kind of thing. Okay. Now, did you ever have a girlfriend? Yeah, I've had maybe a, maybe a couple after, yeah. after all the psychosis, after getting on medication. Okay. Before, um, before that, I also had maybe three or four when I was a teen. Okay. Now, because the reason I ask you that is because, you know, sometimes women, are, or even when you're young, girls are looking for, you know, boys that are just either playing football, or strong, have a job, a truck, or something like that. They can drive around to the movies, and they have money so they can do stuff you know, eat ice cream, go have ice cream and chat and all these kind of things. Now, did your girlfriends ever, did any of them ever leave you because of this? Uh, no, because I didn't have one while I was starting to get uh, oh, okay. the mental illness. Um, so how did you deal with having a girlfriend when you were actually going through what you were going through? I mean, because when you were homeless, you couldn't have had a girlfriend. No. Well... Oh. <laughs> no, 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 I, oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't. Sorry. Well, part of my growth was to um, let go of a, a lot of the need and desperation oh, okay. to, to have a partner. You know, obviously a part of me still wants one and it will happen for me, but I have this, I, I, I try to focus on myself and my own personal mm, development. That's a good, that's good advice, focus on yourself. Because, you know, we all think someone else can complete us. We don't feel whole already. Mm-hmm. We feel like we're half. Mm-hmm. So, so um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you said that. It made great sense. You have to focus on yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's true. People don't know that a lot of times you have to love yourself, focus on yourself, and worry about yourself. And um, you know, Roman, I, I, there's so many questions I could ask you. I just think that the fact that you sort of have taken control of your life. You're living on your own now, right? Mm -hmm. You're taking your medication. Mm -hmm. You're doing well with it. Now, how often do you have to see a doctor? What are the doctors doctors actually saying about you right now? Well, I mean, the doctors think I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still struggling. I still have my depressions and things I go through, um, Mm -hmm. anxieties, depressions, things I work on. Uh, the doctors uh, see me as doing well. They, my doctor wants me to be more active, maybe have a job. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that will help. That will help, and I'm I'm looking. I had I had a job where I was a funeral driver recently. Oh. <laughs> and I really enjoyed it, but I, I quit impulsively. So now I'm looking to get a, to get something similar back. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. You know, sometimes we have to do jobs that we don't want to do. I always thought the world of drag was. Entertaining was my big thing, but once I realized that from the direction of just a couple of people pushing me, they said, you know, maybe you should try to do this as well, because 